I will be showing you how to go from this to this in Oblivion Remastered. You can watch this video in full quality without YouTube compression on my Patreon. Link is in the description. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system and I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. First, let's start by taking a look at the CPU performance. And unfortunately, the least I can say is that it's abysmal. The CPU gets hammered when there's barely anything going on in-game. The frame rates are quite low when CPU limited, meaning a 60 FPS lock is out of the question for most low and mid-range CPUs, which is just crazy for this game. The game always uses Lumen ray tracing in either its software or hardware form, and the hardware mode further impacts CPU performance and severely lowers frame rates. Plus, the game suffers from a lot of very obvious stuttering issues, even though it has a pre-compilation step at launch. To make it short, don't expect high frame rates in this game. Now let's get into the settings, starting with screen space reflections, which can be disabled or enabled. By the way, there are other forms of reflection methods in addition to this one. With it turned on, especially when looking at bodies of water, the hideous reflection artifacts can become very noticeable. And with it turned off, they don't happen anymore. But it completely disables some reflections. I recommend keeping this setting turned on as it doesn't seem to have a performance impact. But turn it off if you are really annoyed by screen space artifacts. The view distance setting is pretty straightforward, with each option gradually increasing the distance at which objects render and their level of detail, therefore reducing popping during gameplay. Low seems to have pretty obvious popping. Medium is a big improvement, although some popping can be observed, while high and ultra seem to eliminate any obvious popping, but they have an even bigger impact to performance. I recommend medium for the best balance. The effects quality setting controls a few different things, one of which is that on high, it starts blending the landscape with the objects on top of it, which looks really nice. In another scene, on high, it starts adding a heat haze effect to fire, and on ultra, it increases the quality of the fire itself. Performance drops further with each option, but I recommend high for the best balance. Foliage quality increases the density, variety, and draw distance of foliage and shrubs. Performance-wise, low and medium perform the same, while high and ultra start decreasing performance. Therefore, I recommend medium to save a couple of frames. The shadow quality on low breaks the game's lighting by disabling volumetric lighting entirely. As for the shadows, each option gradually increases their quality. Also, this setting doesn't seem to affect far shadow quality in any noticeable way or its cutoff distance, and each option higher gradually lowers performance. I recommend medium for the best balance. For global illumination quality, the difference between low, medium, and high is very subtle, while ultra has a bigger impact to visuals by increasing the accuracy of shading. It appears to be the same indoors as well, but the improvement on ultra is even more subtle here. In an outdoor scene at night, the biggest improvement is actually seen when going from low to medium, while high and ultra have a very minimal improvement. Medium and high perform the same, while ultra has a bigger performance impact. I recommend high for the best balance. The texture quality setting increases texture resolution and anisotropic filtering with each option. As for VRAM usage, 
the increase is only observed on ultra and it's minimal. Reflection quality on low and medium look the same, while high has much better looking reflections and ultra ever so slightly increases their quality to the point where even side by side it's hard to tell the difference. In this indoor scene, when looking at the bottles and shiny trees, high and ultra improve their reflectiveness and shading with much better accuracy. As for performance, low and medium look and perform the same, while high starts impacting performance, and ultra does so even further. I recommend high. The post-processing quality setting controls a few different things. Going from low to medium enables ambient occlusion, high enables vignetting and chromatic aberration, and ultra increases the accuracy of ambient occlusion slightly. In another scene, I also noticed that when going from medium to high, it enables bloom and light rays. Performance is impacted on high and ultra, and they both perform the same. So, I recommend keeping this on ultra. I think the hair quality setting is broken, since there seems to be no difference in hair or fur quality, or performance. The cloth quality setting seems to increase the distance at which cloth physics start animating, and the distance increase is quite laughable. It barely makes a difference in most scenes, and there doesn't seem to be any performance difference. Keep it on ultra. Hardware lumen sure does increase the quality of reflections on water surfaces, and only on ultra does it further improve them noticeably, and indoors, it can also improve the behavior and shading of materials on some objects. And this setting seriously hurts GPU and CPU performance. So keep it turned off for the best performance. As for the quality of software lumen, going from low to high ever so slightly increases the accuracy of reflections. And the high option can impact performance a bit. So. Keep this setting on low to gain a few more frames for basically no noticeable loss in visual quality. For upscaling, during stills, XCSS seems to look a bit blurrier than the other options. FSR definitely looks sharper and more defined, while DLSS surprisingly appears to suffer from a bit of shimmering all over the place. Nothing major but definitely noticeable if you focus on it. This was also the case with The Last of Us Part 2, but here, it's not as severe. During motion, here is when things start to break down. Native TAA has terrible ghosting going on. TSR native greatly decreases ghosting, and XESS ultra quality seems to have trouble with image stability and shimmering. FSR quality also suffers from severe ghosting. This time, it looks to last even longer than native TAA. As for DLSS quality, it doesn't appear to suffer from any ghosting issues, just the shimmering we observed earlier. Here are the optimized settings, and I would like to thank Chirpy for being a continuous platinum member on Patreon, and you can support me directly too by becoming a member. In return, you will get to watch my optimization videos just like this one in full quality without compression and have your name in them as well. You will also get to download my two custom overlays that you see in my videos. Now for the performance. On max settings at native 1440p, performance can drop to the mid-teens, never mind the stuttering issues and hangs that keep happening. Using the optimized settings, still at native 1440p, performance increased by almost double, but it still drops below 30fps, but at least the stutters are now less severe. Turning on DLSS quality finally lets us achieve frame rates over 30fps consistently, but stutters still occur, and they are still very noticeable, because they lower the 1% lows to way below 30 fps. Without a doubt, Oblivion Remastered is one hell of an optimization mess. 
It runs way worse than it should. It's way, way more demanding than it has any right to be. And it can be CPU limited below 60 FPS on most low and mid range CPUs. It's an insult to PC players all around. And also, I encountered way too many bugs during my testing, some of which you've probably seen in this video. But I guess it wouldn't be an open world Bethesda game, especially an Elder Scrolls game without bugs. Otherwise, it appears to be great gameplay wise. Tell me what you guys think in the comments.